Okay, hello, Robert Marzullo here, and I had a couple requests um, for people wanting to know how I go about cross-hatching, and one person referred to it as the uh, the 90s cross-hatching shading technique for comics, and yeah, I can definitely kind of see that. That's uh, That was a big influence for me, it was the 90 comics, so at any rate, here we go. Um, it's real simple. I think the, the number one mistake that a lot of uh, up-and-coming artists make, first we'll start off with the shape. And I'll kind of explain it. Like, uh, let's say this is a, a bicep shoulder connected here, uh, and these are these drawings are just going to be for uh, speed to show the shading, not so much the quality of the, uh, the drawing. Like I might redraw something a few times to get it right. This I'm just going to kind of put it down real fast and focus more on how I would go about adding the lighting effects and the shading, and mainly the cross hatching. Um, the big thing that I think people mess up on when they're cross hatching, um, and I'm not saying I'm perfect by any means, I mess up a two quite a bit, but that's how you learn, is the uh, they don't feather their lines. So it's a real big part of good good cross hatching, good shading. Um, I think a lot of young artists, I think I thought this at one time, thought, you know, oh, well, that, that just must be a special pen they're using. No, it's, I've seen guys, uh, one that comes to mind, I've seen. Uh, whilst Portacio do stuff where, I mean, he, he takes microns and makes it look like he's working with brushes. So it's really just how you use them. Um, and the computer softwares are great. I mean, you can see right here, thick to thin, no problem. Um, so it's like a brush anyways, but even still you want to you wanna feather a bit. So I'll show you here. So we'll say our light source, and I always do this in my drawings. I'll, I'll draw kind of a reminder arrow light source because I'm real bad about forgetting as I'm getting into the drawing and doing my stuff where that light source was supposed to be and next thing you know I got a, a drawing with multiple light sources that shouldn't have been or whatever so okay um, and just real quick you know you could kind of block in where you think the lights gonna uh, round off or you know light hitting here shadow falling back here maybe a secondary light so there's uh, a little bit leftover lighting here. Put some quick X's in there to mark where your your bulkier shadows are going. Like this. And this again, this is just real rough, not perfect. Like that. Yeah, that's ugly. Right there. Yeah. You get the point though. Just that, you know, there's a, some heavy hitting shadows on the uh, on the arm and then a secondary light source where you leave a little bit of opening there um, don't overdo this just you know I tend to but let some of the um, let some of the shadowing just you know cover a lot of stuff I mean that's another you know you'll notice when you see really good uh, artists that can shade really well they they know when to cover full areas um, and block out um, shapes in the the drawing and it looks a lot more believable because of that. I mean, even this here, you know, this lighting is incorrect on the back of this shoulder, you know, but this is fine. I'm just doing this for speed purposes. This would be a little bit more correct, I would think, maybe a little bit less lighting on the, uh, the elbow or whatever. So we'll just fill this in real quick. Gives you a better idea how it's going to look. Okay, so now with the cross hatching or just shading in general, comic book shading, what you want to do is, you know, follow the, the shape of the existing shadow. That's key. You don't always have to do this, but it, it is more believable um, in thick to thin. See how every line isn't just one pull of the line. I'm, I'm doing what's called feathering, and I'm trying to get that to look like a nice thick to thin stroke, not, not just that, that that that's going to be a little bit more boring I mean, which isn't a huge difference from what I got right here but you'll notice and you know the more you do it on certain areas it really stands out like here there's not a whole lot of area I don't want to overshadow uh, that being a smaller muscle group so let's try the bicep and actually what I'll do too I always like to put one or two little cross lines like this and then a couple here because I'm trying to signify, okay, this shape is breaking off and going around this shape. So that's why I do the thick, you know, 
the uh, lines here and have them progressively get smaller and I could probably even shape them around like that and then it's going to give the the uh, perspective that it's going around this you know because there's there's another muscle flowing around here there's one coming up and around the wrist and they're all bends around each other so you know you got to kind of show that even with your shading so okay so here's the bicep pull that in real fast the secondary lighting probably wouldn't reach up here but you know I threw it in there anyway sometimes it looks cool for coloring so basically we'll just shade this with lines and that's where you know if a color artist came in and there was a, a dramatic light source from this way they'd be able to highlight here here if you can see that here here stuff like that so okay so now with the bicep what we'll do is now we can use uh, same thing going with the direction a bit but we'll use large strokes down here to show more shading and then as we come up and around into the brighter part of the light source or whatever the hotter area of the light we'll shorten them up a bit and I'm even starting to bend them back the other way and you know good thick to thins like that and I love how in these softwares you can rotate that was a big killer for me when I started drawing digitally because I rotate my paper like constantly so um, I was I was insanely happy when they started uh, incorporating that into the most most of the really good softwares so there's that and you know I'm trying to build that roundedness see that right there you know just trying to make it appear like that form is rounding around and then down here maybe I want some more shadowing so I'll start bringing these as a cross hatch back up this way and you see the lines start to look pretty pretty nice and you know keep in mind to always draw um, don't don't cheat yourself I would I would do if you're gonna go digital I mean however you want to do it but if you're gonna go digital use a drawing program and a uh, inking program they can be the same thing but definitely do them in two different steps um, I actually use two different ones all together um, I use sketchbook to draw and manga studio to ink and um, I find that's that's really good um, and either one could do the other but they each just have tools that make it just a little bit more smooth to, to work in each you know I, I like how sketchbook it feels like I'm drawing with a pencil here you know and that's what I want I want that very fluid you know like it's almost like I'm working with a soft lead too and I really like that uh, that effect so yeah so that's how, that's how I feather lines just thick to thin multiple poles um, let me see if there's any other you know the another good thing to do too is to practice you know what shading technique you're gonna like to see in your artwork you'll notice I always do like these and then a couple short pulls here that's uh, that's one I like um, let me think here I mean some real popular comic book ones this one uh, this is actually used for I always see this on when people are trying to emulate chrome or something like that they do the, the what I call the uh, horizon uh, lines where it looks like you know you're looking over a horizon here and then they do the little little pokes I don't use this one a whole lot um, but you know it's it's popular it's easy to do um, you see that a lot of people use that for uniforms and, and effects like if you do uh, solid like so you got a shoulder here I'm trying to do this uh, I don't know they're wearing like a little uniform or something and they block out most most of the um, uh, the suit because it's a uh, dark blue, for instance. So you only leave a little bit of light source showing on it. Block all that out. Maybe leave a couple highlights in there or whatever. Block it out. And I've noticed a lot of guys like to do that effect where, you know, maybe on downward on this side they'll do that. If you can see that, I kind of drew that too small, but um, I guess more like that. They'll take those little prongs and put them everywhere. That's what it is. I don't draw them like that, so that's why it was hard for me to remember that. Um, but yeah, they'll kind of go crazy with the little prong effect here. So that's another type of uh, comic book shading you'll see. Uh, what's another? I mean, you know, cross hatching is cross hatching. That can be anything from, you know. Uh, Traditional stuff like this, where you you know thick to thin, you pull inward, and a lot of guys will do it where all the thick lines end up to the same side, 
and then that's how you break apart and you get your uh, transition from light to dark like that um, another one that's real popular is people do a long pole like this and then they'll break up uh, and do little speck lines like this I think they feel like it adds texture or something um, obviously stipple you know or, or pointillism you know is real popular you can use that any number of ways that's real easy to do just a series of dots you know it's always nicer when you got pressure sensitivity too because you know or if you're working on paper if you use you can use a softer pencil to do this or a brush because you're going to get that thick to thin you're going to get the variation and that's that's what sets other drawings apart is line variation you know just like when you one other quick thing and I know I've mentioned this before but when you draw these drawings and you come around here you got to add thick to thin lines I mean that is huge in comics I, and when done well it's it looks so much better than you know when it's not there at all you know it's like that adds more weight to the the drawing and the form I think than than even the cross hatching sometimes so that's really important in fact it does add more because you'll see some guys that don't do cross hatching um, they keep their line work very very basic and it somehow they still have these uh, amazing forms that that jump right off the page so yeah and that shadows ugly this part don't do that that's not how you sh shade a shoulder there okay and then um, pointillism uh, cross hatching kind of straight lines you know you could bring it this way too oh that reminds me yeah another real popular one is this one it's basically what I just did there but all you do is you kind of do uh, various lines like that and then you come across this way and then you start to break them apart and you'll see this like um, um, people use it for space uh, the areas of space it might lighten up uh, like the um, oh goodness I'm drawing a blank um, or you'll see it like on the back of walls uh, it provides texture and it you know it's, a, it's an easy way to show shading where it's light and dark against an area you know so if you block out an area like this this is what I'm talking about with the I don't know if it's supposed to represent the Milky Way or what but you'll see this in space all this will be blocked out and then guys will come in and they'll just do a crazy amount of lines like this I do it a lot with my uh, Blackstone comic book and across this way again you can use the thick to thin I'm doing this faster just to kind of show you the idea but you know you can do the the line feathering and then I've even seen it where guys will do the third set of lines like this to really break it up so you know that's how they get that kind of cool Milky Way effect if I'm saying that right galaxy no it would be a galaxy oh, time for me to open up the science books again yeah so like that you get the gist so there's another effect that one's real sloppy but I'm just trying to get you know give you these ideas here and let's see I think that might cover it I mean there's any number of them you, you know you really just have to play with it and you gotta you know another good uh, uh, technique for practice is always start with the basics draw uh, a circle uh, sphere you know designate your light source designate your horizon again light source here so now just take that and then you know really practice you know do ten of these suckers you know and put them on the wall and stare at them and, and figure out what you could have did better and then do another ten and what you'll do there is you'll you know you'll figure out okay my light source is hitting and it's rounding around the sphere say here and then based on that my shadow would hit over here and actually I want to say that would hit even further and you can kinda give yourself little uh, clues as to where the shadow is gonna hit and then alright do I have a second light source uh, maybe I do so that's gonna hit over here but it's gonna be real 
faint. It's going to just barely glow around the edge of my uh, my sphere. And then, you know, maybe this uh, hits all the way to the edge. Uh, maybe it doesn't, you know, or maybe it starts to show a little bit of light here. But then once it wraps around here, it, it hits to the very bottom edge of the, uh, the sphere there. And then practice doing that with different types of lines. And that might give you uh, a feel for, for what kind of shading you really like um, with your comic book illustration. I mean, I guarantee you do this uh, this thing ten times over, you're going to learn something. So it's kind of making me want to do it right now, but because I haven't done this in a while. So forgive me if it doesn't come out perfect. And then here, I'll probably say, okay, I want to make it where the darker area then breaks apart and becomes lighter here. See how sloppy that is. Keep in mind, you know, the best thing about digital is uh, I could have did this in layers, and this thing would have looked as uh, clean as can be. So um, definitely use layers. Layers are, are your best friend with this kind of stuff. I look at it like uh, layers basically just replace the light table that I got sitting behind me in my studio that I now never use. It's uh, I actually need to jump on it just to feel like it's not a huge uh, waste of space but I don't need it anymore because I can use layers and do whatever I got to do yeah so I definitely need to do this practice because that's probably uh, not the best way I could have did this but you know, but the other thing is too, you know, you just kind of scribble and practice and play with this stuff. That's, that's what, uh, I used to just, yeah, not, scribble for hours just doing different cross hatching, you know, and, and I'm still not the greatest at it. I still got a long ways to go. Uh, but that's, that's awesome. I, I like that. I, I want, that's what I love about art is the continued improvement and, uh, the reward when you do learn new techniques and you see an artist that inspires you or some, uh, something in life that inspires you and you just keep going and going and trying to achieve that next level so that's what that's what's you know the, where the passion lies for me in it um, but you know you basically just have to keep going and, and pushing along and practicing different things and see what sticks so I think that's about it you know again um, you know areas like this for instance I just want to cover this one, one more time that you know if you're trying to push this form out and you're imagining that your lights coming across here and hitting the arm then you want these lines to go from thick to thin and kind of round around the form and use different variations of that no that's that's one other thing I should mention use variations in your lines it's really important you don't want your uh, your form and your artwork to look stagnant or, or boring because you have the same thickness of lines all throughout the entire thing that's not going to work so you know sometimes you're going to want to throw these little thin lines in like this and you know in a different cross hatch and so that basically when you get to this next part down here these thicker bolder ones are more pronounced and you know then you'll start seeing where you want to add that to your forms to make certain forms jump out and certain ones uh, recess back so that's about it. Hopefully that helps you. Um, like I said, I just had a few questions on it, so I wanted to make sure I addressed it. I'm um, trying to continue to improve this YouTube channel and not only show the uh, production of the Blackstone comic book that I'm doing, but also to help young artists um, grow their talents and abilities. And I know it was a struggle for me to, to even get to where I am, so I want to make sure that I can give back and help out. So if anybody has any questions, please feel free to put it in there. And please share and please subscribe. So 
Thanks very much for watching today, and uh, hopefully this helps you out. Have a great day.